442nd and original 442nd from and uh, 100th Battalion, they, they made a name for themselves. In September of 1943, the 100th Battalion, which was a separate unit of Nisei boys in Hawaii, had so many casualties, and it was only a battalion. So, their numbers were very, getting smaller and smaller, and they were called the, the Purple Heart Battalion because of their heavy casualties. We got to Italy at the 1st of June, and the, the 100th Battalion had already taken Rome. So we joined the 100th Battalion north of Rome, and then formed the complete 442nd Regiment. But the 100th kept their own designation, 100th Battalion, 442nd Regiment. We had come out of Italy where there were no trees at all, very, very few trees. And all of a sudden, we're going into this forest. So conditions were different. And by that time, it was, I have a picture taken October 14, gearing up to go. And October 15, we made our attack in the forest, going toward Bruyere. And it was an eight-day battle in the forest. And all of a sudden, we got into what we found out was tree burst. Well, when they come in and hit a tree, it's above you, and it would detonate, and would just shrapnel would go all around like an umbrella, and anything below you would just come right down on you. So it was a hell of a weapon for the Germans. It was an early winter, this is below the Alps, it would be raining, the fox holes are filled with water, you know, and your boots are full of water, you're and you're, you know, you're cold sweat from being in combat, and it's wet outside, you're wet head to toe, and you, you just keep going. 23rd, it might have been the 23rd, 24th of October, we were able to finally be replaced, and we went back, we were able to get showers, fresh change of clothes, hot food, it, you know, you can't believe how great that tastes, and fresh water, and we're all just resting, cleaning our equipment, and, and all of a sudden the order comes, get your stuff ready, we're going back. And they're saying, what for? We just, you know, we just got off of eight days of battle. Push forward, and the first battalion that pushed forward about five miles into the woods, completely without, without support, and now they're completely surrounded on all four sides by Germans. They're on this hill. And they're trying to fight their way out, and they can't. They were there about a week. And so on the 25th of October, the 442nd is told that they had already tried the 1st Battalion of the 141st, 2nd Battalion of the 141st, could not reach them four or five miles away. They couldn't break through the German lines. They're getting decimated. Now the 442nd is still weak from numbers, and we're told to go. Well, we geared up and we went. And it was five days of almost continuous hand-to-hand -hand battle. It was getting foggy now. We hardly ever saw the sun. It was alternately raining and cold, and the fog was drifting in. Many of the days, we could hear Germans and they could hear us. We couldn't see each other. So you'd fire at sounds, and if you were firing at a figure, you made sure that the helmet came down over the ear, the German helmet, not the straight American helmet, you know, because you could not see where your men were. Normally, you, you shoot two battalions up to the front line and put one in reserve. But in this case, all three battalions had to go up in the front line because we had the, had, the, had the manpower. It took all three battalions probably to form one whole battalion. The manpower was so weak. But it was 
It was a pretty bloody battle. It was not until October 30 that the, the 442nd finally reached the, the, the remaining 211 men of the 1st Battalion, that was so-called Lost Battalion. But in those roughly 15 days of battle, 442nd had over 800 casualties and lost over 200 men killed. Now, we rescued 211 of the 141st men, but about, of those, about 50 were litter cases, had to be carried out. I wasn't there. My own story is that I have a birthday story. October 27, 1944 is my 21st birthday. Well, I felt really good that day. And I'm 21 years old, I'm not injured, you know, I, I'm still going. And that was the morning in which we're making this attack, and it's foggy. And all of a sudden, a German popped up and shot me. It just point blank, but from here to where you are. And I couldn't believe it. I heard the shot and everything. And nothing happened to me. I just turned around and I just drilled him with my BAR. And I ran up and knocked his helmet off. And it was a little boy. Maybe 14, 15 years old. You know, Germans, they used everybody. Well, I'm sure he was probably more scared than I was. He's, you know, he just, he just shot his rifle and missed me completely. I should have been dead, but, you know, and we had to move on. But the uh, 21st birthday, and just by luck, I'm still alive. But we, we, we made our attack, we got the hill, we, we settled down for the evening, we dug in as best we could, and we're gonna attack the next day. We're trying to regroup our forces, and we know what we have to do. We're still, we don't know how far away we are. We think we're about two hills away. We can hear the firing going on. You can't see because it's so foggy. So. We decided we were going to wait till daybreak or as close as we can get to daybreak and make another attack. Well, that morning, very, very early, the Germans counterattacked and they sent their artillery, boom, 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 just one after the other. It just wouldn't let up. Maybe 15 to 20 minutes of constant artillery. And it's, it, we're in a forest and it, the trees are getting shattered as artillery is coming down. And that's when a large chunk of metal, red hot metal, hit me in the back. And it went through my back, and luckily it didn't go straight through me. And it just, it, it, it was so painful. It just, you know, it just, you're burning up inside, and yet you're just, you can't move. You just curled up into a ball. And just, oh, I, I just can't tell you how painful it was. And um, finally, a medic got to me. But um, I, I just told him, let me die right here. And uh, I'm sure he shot me full of morphine, because I don't remember anything after that. And when I woke up, I was on a, a hospital train going to the American Hospital in Dijon, France, for a surgery. But um, oh, that pain was just, oh, it, it, it's hard to explain. So that was my end of going to the Lost Battalion. But I'm glad that the others made it. You know, it was two more days before they made it. This heavy battle, hand-to-hand, -to -hand, just tough. There's these six mountains over here. Mount Fogorito is the main one. And there's this valley. And over here is this village of Azano. And we're sitting in the village of Azano, watching the 92nd Division trying to attack. Well, on about the third day, the 442nd notifies General Clark, OK, we have a plan of attack. We're going to scale that mountain. And General Clark says, well, I'll give you two weeks. <laughs>